Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The integrated resource plan has finally been released. Terence Creamer joins me to talk about what happens next. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. The IRP 2019 has been broadly welcomed despite not being least cost. Yes, I think there's a, a relief out there that this plan is in place. Without it, there was no procurement taking place and we know what's been happening in the electricity supply industry with load shedding having returned. Now, if we had been consistently procuring over the last few years, we haven't had a, a tender for new electricity since 2014. And we obviously had that very long delay in the, product, uh, the building of the plants that were procured back in that year. And only last year did we start seeing shovels in the ground because Eskom refused to sign the power purchase agreements for three years. Um, if we had, hadn't had all those delays, I don't think we would have been seeing load shedding as we are at the moment because there hasn't really been demand growth. But we've seen a major decline or deterioration in the energy availability factor from the coal-fired power stations um, as well as from the new build power stations, Madupi and Kosilia, which have been derated against the nameplate production um, and what they, what they expected nameplate production. So we aren't getting the sort of energy out of the coal-fired power stations that we expected, so now we're in this very tight position again. So we need to get procurement going again, and the plan is therefore broadly welcomed. Yes, it's not least cost. I think the one estimate that uh, has come out is it's, it's up to 100 billion rand more than what a least cost uh, plan would have been. Now, we know least cost would have been a, a mix of solar photovoltaic, uh, onshore wind, and flexible generation as represented by gas. But the plan includes uh, an element of new coal, uh, 1,500 megawatts of new coal. That is controversial, it's 500 megawatts up from where it uh, would have been. And then it also includes um, the Inga um, project from the DRC. Uh, again, that's a s sort of a treaty, uh, it's not least cost, but it's a treaty arrangement. South Africa agreeing to buy 2,500 megawatts of Inga power. Whether that materializes or not is also up for debate. And then we've also got the Eskom batteries, which deviates from the least cost. But on the whole, I think uh, it is broadly welcomed. And uh, there's now hopefully going to be new energy about getting uh, 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 electricity procured into the system so that we can get this load shedding threat behind us. The plan identifies a short-term gap that needs to be filled. Yes, I think that's another very welcome development um, that we know that because we haven't been procuring, we know because of the derating of the uh, Kusilia and Madupi, as well as the lower uh, energy availability factor, there is going to be a gap. That gap has been estimated in the RP uh, 2019 at between 2,000 uh, and 3,000 megawatts that we are short and that needs to be procured very urgently. Now, there's, uh, in, the, in the days when we had the integrated resource plan 2010, we were, we were also in a load shedding phase, and there was a feeling that we were going to recover from the global financial crisis, the global economic recession, which we actually did not. So we entered into uh, medium-term power purchase arrangements to try and f close that gap urgently. Those were both on the demand side and the supply side. So we need to close that gap, and there's a column in the table, the RP uh, 2019 table. The last column uh, caters for something called distributed generation, as well as some of other technologies I mentioned, um, biomass and landfill gas, etc. And uh, that column uh, caters, uh, caters for 500 megawatts a year from 2023. But between 2019 and 2022, it's been left open to an allocation that will be determined by the authorities to say how much, uh, how, how big is the gap. And at the moment we're thinking the gap is around that um, 3,000 megawatt level. So there will be an emergency procurement program. And uh, uh, the government or the Department of uh, Mineral Resources and Energy, probably through the RPP office, is going to release a request for information to see what sort of technologies can close that gap at, a, at an accelerated pace, even faster than say another bid window for renewables, which is the, the quickest uh, big large scale solution that you can introduce, it takes between 24 and 36 months. So they're looking at some emergency supply side 
and demand side solutions. Uh, we'll see what the responses are. But I think also that last column caters for uh, rooftop soda, and we know there's a huge pent up um, supply option there from both residents, but particularly commercial and industrial businesses that, are, that have been looking at these projects for some time, but have been caught up in red tape. And I think that that allows for the procurement of these uh, distributed options. And it's g going to be now interesting to see if we can get these, these uh, very short-term uh, measures in place so that we can get ourselves out of this continual specter of load shedding, which really is a, a weight on investment outside of the electricity sector and therefore South Africa's growth and job creation ability. What needs to happen now and do you think there will be investor appetite? Well, I think what needs to happen now is we need to first get this RFI for the emergency solutions and in parallel start preparing the, uh, the determinations, which is the ministerial determinations, and the bidding programs for sp especially the renewables, because they're the quickest and cheapest, get that back, the bid window five moving. Now, the issue around determinations is that we know after the High Court judgment on the nuclear ruling in 2017 that a nurse, nurse's concurrence has to be accompanied by a public participation process. Now, we're in an emergency situation, so we need to somehow fast-track that. And I, I understand that there's some legal advice being sought around particularly the RFI and the, the procurement program that will arise from that as how to get that nurse a concurrence with, uh, within that constraint of the public participation in the quickest possible time. I imagine similarly we'll want to get that bid window far for renewables going as quickly as possible. Again, the concurrence will be needed urgently so that these procurement programs can go. Uh, go ahead. So I think those are important, uh, as well as I think the IPP office has promised stakeholder engagement before it releases the bid window five documentation, as well as I think the next big ticket item would be the uh, the gas to power program, and uh, I think that so that those sort of stakeholder engagements are also urgent, so that we can get beyond this period of you know discussing what should be in the mix uh, and wringing our hands over that. We now have a document. It's not perfect, but it creates a framework for procurement. We know that we've got this immediate cap of about 3,000 megawatts. We know that there's going to be massive decommissioning of the coal fleet, start well, accelerated decommissioning of the coal fleet between 2019 and 2030. So that's going to create a gap, even if there's no new, de new demand. So we have to get ourselves into a steady state of procuring you know, th this 1,000 or 2,000 megawatts a year uh, in whatever technology it might be and start doing that as soon as possible so that we can get out of this um, overhang of uh, load shedding or power cuts, uh, overhanging the investment climate and lowering investment confidence so that we can get into a, a, a period where uh, th this is not a constraint to other investment in mining and industry and business generally and South Africa can s start growing again. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.